Glad the Lord let us have a good week. Yes. He's been better to us. We deserve it. Amen. 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 We're grateful for everything that he's done for us. And I thank God for what he's going to do for us in the days ahead. And I pray to the Lord for being here. Amen. Let's start the song of service off in page 131. And uh, we're going to sing, Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Yes, it is. I'm glad if we can trust <clears throat> him. Oh, baby. Yes. The old saying, you can't crack him, you trust him. That's uh, right. right. But I thank y'all for <clears> that today. Let's just go, go ahead and start off. <clears throat> Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. Just to rest upon His promise, just to know the strength of the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I prove Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh.
Amen. You know that I know this. This is true. I've been to a lot. I've been around a lot of preachers in my days, and I've been to a lot of churches, and I know me and right now. I've never in my entire life heard them <coughs> preach about the cross. Mm. I've never heard them preach about the love of God. It's all that lives to do's and don'ts. Let me tell you what, the, the, that's in the gospel, the death, burial, the resurrection. That's right. Amen, preacher. I thank God for the cross today. Yes, amen. Have you ever been in a time in your life where the devil makes you want to doubt God? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I'm glad this morning to tell you that God has never failed. Never, never, and never, there's no need will. to doubt. That's right. It's not because he's yeah. brought you so this far. Uh, yes, he has. Yes, yes, he has. Amen. Woo. Hope this song will be a blessing to Bless you. Bless the Jesus. Put it on. Looking back through the years, the heart Yeah. Work on her. 
Oh! 
so that we so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Bless your reading of your word this morning, God, in Jesus' name. Yes, yes Lord. Great man. We don't we see here how this is talking about the Israelites, how they wandered in the wilderness. And they dealt with something then that it, we believe we, we see this morning. That it dealt with every person. In the house of God and in the congregation where you met with God. The Bible says that you remember the story. How that they went, started out, they were conservative estimate. All those two million Jews left Egypt on their journey toward Canaan, the promised land. But the Bible says that. Many fell in the carcasses fell in the wilderness and they didn't enter into Canaan. Why? Because of unbelief. Many of us this morning, you don't battle the sin of drunkenness. You don't battle the sin of wickedness. But everybody here in this building this morning can say to some degree in our life, we all battle unbelief. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we do. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you what. Many people today have that trouble with unbelief. Many Christians today. And if I would probably give them all a call and we would be honest with God, all of us would be honest with God, I'm sure there wouldn't be one less sitting in the pew. Mm -hmm. That we all do battle that daily in our lives as a child of God. Look at verse 19, what it says. It says this. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Now Canaan in the Bible is symbolic of a, of a victorious life in Christ. It ain't, it ain't symbolic of heaven. It's symbolic of having that victory. In our life. And most people today, because of their unbelief, have not got victory, really full victory in their life. There's things in their life that's came, that's come in their life that's caused them to doubt. And some never get out of that condition in their life. Many people today, this is true, whether it be a spiritual level or the secular level, many things people we can we don't do and don't, won't do because of unbelief in our life. I know the Bible does say is there anything too hard for God? And no, they're not. But many times we limit God in our unbelief. Many times we have a need. And we got a need, and sometimes it's frightful the things in our life that we worry about and we pray about, but we still, we still linger yeah. with that doubt in our life that God's going to help us. Amen. <clears throat> Let me take it honest to you today. Every man, you know, man is a preacher or every woman is a preacher, whoever you may be. We that we battle with that, and we will battle with that until Jesus takes us home. Yeah. Because why? We're still human, yeah. and we still have that carnal, carnal man living in us. Yeah. I want to preach today on this one word: unbelief. That's all it is, brother. But this unbelief. That's all it's about. And I want to tell you something this morning, friend. I believe we could all right now raise our heads and say we're guilty. Yeah. Somewhere in our life we're guilty of, of be doing like that. Somewhere in our life we're guilty of having that sin of unbelief in our life. But let me tell you this morning, friend, we need to understand. God knows it. He knows our heart. 
And many times, my friend, this morning, we all understand this. <coughs> We've been robbed of so many victories in our life yeah, because yeah. of that unbelief. Yeah. Who would have thought a boy like Brother Jason Frank's son would have been completely in an invalid state over 13 months ago would be walking around talking. Hey, hey, buddy. Yeah. Hey, buddy. Who would have thought that a man they almost told he had lung cancer now had nothing, nothing there. But he did say, he did say this, that a tiny bit spot, hey, think it's nothing but scar tissue, it's nothing but a fingerprint of God. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 But we understand, we cheer ourselves out of any time of unbelief. Because our heart, our, 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 our soul, it, the, the natural man of the natural spirit, the carnal spirit, cannot discern the spiritual things of God. Amen. There's a few things, four things I'm going to try to hurry and be through. First of all, unbelief don't never have enough evidence. Yep. No, that's good. Yeah, that's good. In verse 9 and 10, when you read with me, it said, When your father tempted me, proved me, and saw my work forty years. He said, Wherefore I was grieved with that generation, said, Today do you always err in your heart and have not known my ways. He said, Look, I've done all this, I still agree with it because I don't believe. Unbelief. We have all the information we have to draw from. We've got the word of God, we've got the promises of God and everything else. We got to understand a lot of people have never got grasp of that in their life. When you go into a difficult time, a scary time, a healthy scare or something, the devil will sit on your shoulder and feed you lies. Mm -hmm. And according to how your position or condition you are with God, whether you'll listen or you'll say no. We've got to claim what God said. I'll never leave you for Satan. He's still the great physician, friend. Yeah. And we understand and see this here today. Some people have gotten a hold of what God has done. We all have the same proof that God is able to do exceeding your mother all we ever asked. But some people cannot never truly believe to you. They're waiting for one more thing. And if God does, they'll wait for another thing. Yeah. Yeah. They will not ever in their life be convinced. A truth of a truth. Amen. And they always walk around, Brother Mike, with a heart of unbelief. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just like a person's lost. God done a lot. There's some here today God has done so much for. Amen. God has brought you through physical problems, financial problems, yes. spiritual needs, and you still not come to Him. Why? Well, what is it going to take to prove what well, God has proven? Amen. Amen. Get Get fresh. The children of Israel, they found themselves enslaved for 40 years. There, after 400 long years, they enslaved for 400, I'm sorry. But for 400 long years, they were in the under the taskmasters of Egypt. They cried unto God. God delivered them. And then they witnessed many miracles. They defeated the man in the water from the rock. They saw the parting of the Red Sea. They saw God do great and mysterious things. They had the cloud to lead the fire, a fiery cloud to lead them by night. But they still doubted. They watched the walls of Eden. They watched the walls of the Red Sea roll back. And they watched it close behind the Egyptians and uh, on the Egyptians and saw many bodies of Egyptian soldiers laying on the shoreline. But they still didn't believe. You would have thought after that, but they still had a heart of them. I want to ask you all a question this morning. In your life, there's certain, some certain circumstance in your life that God has miraculously brought you to it. And it had to be God. But have you believed or are you still in the heart of unbelief? You know? Let's see the preacher. Amen. Well, look here, folks. Unbelief don't never have enough proof. That's exactly right. 
One thing about it, if God would have still done more for me, it wouldn't have been enough. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, that's the way it is God, God people today, Brother Phil. Mm -hmm. If God has been so good to a lot of people, and they still don't believe he's done more, they still believe. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. They still yeah. believe. Here's a preacher, brother. I don't tell you what, bro, we don't understand see this, folks. Look at the example of the rich man and Lazarus, folks. The rich man died and went to hell, lifted his eyes in hell. And he prayed and told, and he told him, he asked Abraham to send Lazarus to go, and, uh, send someone to go to back to earth and preach to his five brethren. Then if somebody rose from the grave, they would, still wouldn't believe they said if they don't, if they don't hear Moses and the prophet, they will be persuaded that the one did raise from the dead. Unbelief is never feel that. It's got to be fed. It's got to see something bigger. That's why we have people today in our in our churches, and a lot of people are so head over heels in debt they can't pay the bills just to die. Yeah. They always want more. God bless them, but they ain't never satisfied. I'll tell you what, we got to stand see this today, folks. It's never full. Not only that, unbelief will rob us of opportunities in our life. Verses 11 through 16 tells us this. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take ye therefore, brother, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily. While it is called today, lest any of you should be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are, we are made partakers of Christ, and if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast in him. While it is, it is said today, if you will hear his voice and harden not your heart, as in the provocation. For some, when they heard, did provoke, how Howbeit not all came out of Egypt by Moses. I'll tell you what, for we understand, see this, folks. God, God smiled on the children of the Israelites when they cried out in Egypt to be delivered. God smiled on them. God, God entered in that covenant with them. And God brought them from, from Egypt. And they crossed the Red Sea. They saw a pile and pile of body on the Red Sea shore. What the Egyptian soldiers had drowned it through, the, through being drowned in the Red Sea. They saw the pillar of fire by night and cloud. Everything was going for them. But I remember, you know what? So many people have everything going for them this morning, but it's not enough. Yeah. It's not enough for some people. Look at it, you know, they still had that belief. God fed God got them through the Red Sea. God fed them. They still complained about the ate. God been good to every one of us today. God give us a great place to live. I got a nice house to live in. I got nice vehicles to drive. God give me nice. God give me a good folk, family to go to the great church. Let me tell you what I say. Lord, never ever let. I, you know what I'm supposed to say, my brother? You ain't got a little small crowd. And I say, well, what matter does that make? That's what God's got me. I'm satisfied with yeah, that. Man. No, let me tell you, God been too good for me to say, hey, Lord, I want more. Please right. don't deserve what I've got. Amen. 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 You see, look at this. We see the Israelites, children of Israel. We all see, we see Judas is care. Judas had an opportunity to walk and talk with the Lord. But one, one word that describes his life, wasted. None of us in this building, none of us today can say that I am ignorant of the grace of God and the fact that God loves me. God said, because you've heard it, heard it, heard it, and you can't say you're ignorant, because if you're ignorant, you're just closing your ears to the truth. You're not ignorant. You're just rebellious. Amen. Amen. It wasn't going to harden them believe. Amen. Let me tell you what, friend. When we don't believe God will take care of us, folks, that's when we begin to take things in our own hands. Yep. When you have financial problems, instead of taking it to the throne of the grave, you say, well, let's go to this finance company to pay it off. Oh, let's go do this to get this taken. Let's go, let's go sell this. But why don't you consult the master before you do that? That's right. 
Has God ever led any of y'all down this morning? No, no, sir. How many times did God feel y'all from the old barrel? We all Every time. Many times we understand and see this this morning. We rob ourselves of opportunity. No, we won't let go, let go. Somebody hear me. We don't believe God take care of us that we raise no closer to God's heart. Yes. It won't. Like that song, Brother Phil, if we never had a problem, we never knew God would say. Amen. Right. And we never we never have faith in God's word. But with God didn't prove himself time and time. And he proved himself time and time again throughout this country. Amen. In your life. He had some of you have been in financial straits and God brought yeah. you back. Amen. Some of you had problems in your home, your family, your husband, yeah. your wife, your children. Some have had health problems. Yes. Some have had spiritual problems. And I've seen God many, many more yeah. times. He brought you through that. Yeah. And let me tell you, yeah. why yeah. don't you why do yeah. you want to have a heart of unbelief? But God That's why America's in the shape she's in this morning. So. That's right. Yeah. You know why a lot of people don't believe they've seen God too? Because as much as it become, it should become, it don't affect them no more. Mm -hmm. even, even when Moses was there on the backside of the desert, tending his flock, God called him to go lead the Israelites out of Egypt. And during that, during that time, it was so hot in the desert sometimes, that spontaneous combustion of the sun would literally, it felt like holding a magnifying glass over them, over them bush, it would literally come, be, be blazing. And it was a common sight back in those days, a lot of time. But something, and Moses looked at it and said, hey, they, nobody, nobody paid any attention. It's insignificant. You know what? When Moses turned aside to look, Something different. God spoke to him out of that burning bush. Mm -hmm. Listen, somebody wrote this. I don't know, but it's pretty good. It's not, it's not Bible, but it's a pretty good saying. You know what it said? It's, it, he says, someone said, pay attention to the small straw that it makes up a broom. Little things add up. I could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Little things add up. Yeah. Let me tell you what we need to understand today. God been too kind to us, folks. And I know God has blessed us so much. I was looking through a little bit through a financial report here. And how God has blessed Unity by the church. It ain't because of who we are. It's because of who he is. And he's been so gracious. Right. We don't need to doubt him, folks. Yeah. We don't need to have a heart on the right. He's right. paid his money so far. Yeah. And he ain't going to let us down now. Somebody yeah. help you. Yeah. We can't. Yeah. I'll tell you what. But it's a, here's a sad point I'm going to bring this morning. Unbelief will bring you grief. Look at verse 17. He says, But with whom he was grieved 40 years. Talk about the Israelites. And you can read down verse 16. Who he was grieved 40 years. Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wood? The general generation of Israel saw God's work. Saw the works of God for 40 years and still had not believed. Grief affects God. It does. God not only meant good for, uh, means good for us, but you know what? But still we don't believe and we still question God. When things happen, you know what? We were so prone, we were so spoiled. God has blessed us so much. And then when our little comfort is on, our little apple cart is upset, instead of remember what God has already done, we begin to say, God, why? Why do you let me go through this, God? You seem to forget all the good times He's made put you through. God didn't say you never had no problems when you get saved. But look here. We're suspicious of God sometimes. Sometimes we, the devil will put in our mind that God will lose in us. Let me tell you what. Just like when we grieve when we lose our loved ones in death. God grieves when he sees us losing us to a heart of unbelief. 
It ain't, it ain't only involved in lost people, it's involved in saved people too. It grieved the heart of God for us to not believe in His Word. But let me tell you what, friend. Unbelief is the only sin that will, that will limit God. And what we actually do is we put a boundary around what God can do for us. It's like we put ourselves in, in a fence. And that unbelief blocks us out from God. God can fall. God don't go ain't gonna force his will. But God is greed and God will not honor and bless with a heart of unbelief. Somebody help me. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So we see here. The Bible said it was because. In Matthew 13, 58, it was cause of unbelief. Their unbelief. He said, and, and even in Matthew 13, 58, says this. He said, and he did not many, he did uh, not many mighty works there because of what? Their unbelief. Have you wanted God to do work in your life, but you've not seen it happen? Could it be possibly that you're dwelling and you're walking around with a heart of unbelief? That you believe that you, you thank God, you thank God, but you just thank God is limited. He can't go so far. But God ain't got no limits. God's right. limitless. Amen. He's all powerful, almighty, omnipotent. Probably. Amen. But in Matthew 17, what he says, Matthew 13, 58, 58 says, because of their <laughs> But also said in Matthew 17, 20, And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for I say unto you, If you have a faith of the grain of a mustard seed, you shall say in this matter, Remove that, hence to hence yonder place, and shall be removed, and that shall be impossible. Unbelief. Amen. Unbelief. Hey, so that's the cause of your unbelief. Amen. We're so blame God so many times, folks. When things are not by prayers is not honored. But it ain't God. It's our unbelief. Mm -hmm. It's our unbelief. God has never let us down. He's never lied to us. We've lied to him, but he ain't never lied to us. Yeah. Now don't tell you don't, don't, don't say no little halo around you. You know you have. Amen. Well, if you don't change something here in the word of God, we see here. We need to understand we need, we've got to have faith. You ever seen a mustard seed? It's a small, small seed. Yeah. He said if you had a grain of faith, a grain of mustard seed. You could go out and win him out and say, to him. he was probably preaching on the seashore. He said you could take one of those mountains and say, get go and fall into the sea. If you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, they yeah. would. What? They don't take a lot of faith, but it takes faith to the grain of mustard. Mm -hmm. yeah. Too many times our faith is limited on our condition and our, and our circumstances more than it is by our, on the promises of God. Yeah. Sometimes we say, Lord, if you will, I will. We don't, we don't make a, it ain't just make a deal. It ain't just make a deal. Right. Right. It's God's thing on the call. You know what, though? Another thing about unbelief, it brings destruction. They said when the Israelites began to die in the wilderness, and the average of 41 deaths every day of every 40, 40 years, and 41 people died every day. In other words, they had a bunch of crying, weeping, and for days on the end, for 40 long years, a loved one died and buried there in the world. Even during the tribulation period here, when the Lord come and then the tribulation sets in, there'll be, there'll be, there'll be, uh, unbelief will bring destruction. It says here, during the time, there'll be not a calamity during the tribulation period. One out of every three people on earth will die. But that, the, the remainder, two thirds, will not repeat. Look at verse, in Revelation 9, 20 tells us, look what it says. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repenting out of the works of their hands, that they should not worship the devil, and eat idols of gold, and of silver, and brass, and of stone, and of wood, which neither can see, nor hear, nor walk. Neither repented then they of their murders, nor their sorceries, nor their fornication, nor their death. And some preachers said that be so wicked, they'll shake their fist into heaven, and Almighty God. Yep. Yep. 
Unbelief will bring destruction. Yeah. I know a lot of preachers I don't know a lot of Christians that have fallen in the category of falling back out in the world. Have that hard unbelief and quit serving the Lord. You can go to cemeteries all across this country and find them planted in that mother mm -hmm. earth. What you got to send them on out of here. Preacher, I don't believe it. Well, you don't believe your Bible. That's right. You don't believe in the Bible. But he said they saw many works, even though they seen God do great things. Unbelief would cause destruction in your life. Mm -hmm. Unbelief would cause destruction to your life. Your very soul, your life, your, your home, and all that. In America, the reason we're in the shape we're in today is because of our unbelief. The Democrat, and listen, I'm not a Democrat. I, this is on tape. I don't care if it is. <laughs> I am not a Democrat. I'm a Christian, born again child of God. I choose to vote. To, Republican, I'm going to tell you what, it ain't the Democrats' fault we're in the shape we're in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not an advocate for the Democrat Party. You ought to show that ass. Yeah, amen. It ain't the Republicans' fault. It is the fault. It's God's people's fault. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's America's fault. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. When 1963, when Matt and Mary O'Hare was taking their little boy to kindergarten and walked across that cross and that cross and around that, uh, walked by that classroom and them little young sitting there saying, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. She got offended and if she saw them praying, she said they don't need to pray and they got prayer out of school and now they got God out of the school. That's right. Amen. 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 In our own county last Wednesday, someone caught a bomb that had to close both schools down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at that shooting money in, in Tennessee. Yeah. All over the country. Oh, well, we need something to stop this violence. You know what we need? Old time Holy Ghost move of God. Yes, People amazing. getting saved. Yeah. Mama's getting, the getting the mama and daddy getting the right. ready for the young. Instead of just petting them and peeing them, everything Amen. else, we need to get right with God and cry to God for mercy. That's good, preacher. Amen. Amen. Good preacher. Belief in the limited offer. Mm. What do you mean by that, preacher? A lot of you like bargains. You know, I go to Walmart. You know what I do? I look at the clearance rack all the time. Mm. I don't do that. Yeah. Preacher, I don't do that. I only buy. Well, bless your heart. <laughs> if you got that much money, you can buy me from me. Yeah. <laughs> but believe in the limited offer. Yeah. If it was a real bar in town, a good offer, there'll be a limit on what you can buy. Yep. Yeah. That way you have been saved. God said his spirit would not always strive with God with man. You may be here today and you say, I know I'm saved, I, I'm not saved, but have you ever changed your heart? Has your, has your, has your, your mind and your heart got changed toward the things of God? Do you want to be in church? Do you want to serve God? Amen. Do you want to see you? If it's not, there's something dreadful and something bad wrong in your life. Amen. Amen. But don't make that mistake you only believe. That, that, only, that belief just only deals with salvation and belief. Goes further than that. Don't give you that you when you die. Don't let your appetite of what put on your tombstone mean. Say we could not. We could not because of our belief. Don't let that be with us. <coughs> what do you have to do, preacher, to solve this unbelief? There's one one remedy for it. One remedy and one remedy at all. For it. <coughs> That's repentance. Your unbelief. Some of you today, you've got your children, your grandchildren, and you've not seen them saved. You've not even seen a twinkle of conviction in their heart. And I want to ask you something. Have you got to the point you pray for them and say, God, I claim them, you keep praying. Don't just do it one time continuously. Over and over and over. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. <coughs> My daughter got saved in 2018. It was 18 years. About 18 years before, or 17 years before she finally got saved. But we prayed and prayed and prayed. Just don't give up. There's so many people today, amen. They get to the point of love what they do here. That's what they do. Amen. They say, you know what? They're unbelievable. They don't know what to do. Won't you come to God's 
said, God, I'm sorry for, for doubting you. Yeah. I see some people won't do that. They say, I say, I'm sorry for that. There's a lot of people like that would do two words of yeah. I'm sorry. Amen. Amen. And if you're like that, you never forget to God. You never be repent to God. Amen. Amen. I ain't gonna tell him I'm sorry. I ain't tell her, I'll tell you what, treat you out with God, you'll say, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. Uh -huh. You got a heart of unbelief? You say you believe in God, believe your heart till you really know. Yeah. Say, they will go out. God had promised him Canaan land. They promised him the promise and they say, hey, you go. Well, I'm gonna send you to a land of flow with milk and honey. Praise God, the grapes are so big you had to carry a bottle of bile, bile by stack. If I could have matched you, I'd have made him a hell of a hell of a hell of But they had money. Not that if they would go in, he said, you will, I promised it to you. And God promised you all, all of us today, victory. He didn't say if you, he said if you just have a heart of belief and you follow me, I'll give you places, give you opportunity, and put you in a position where you'll be blessed with the honor of Amen. 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 <laughs> We got to say, Lord, we're sorry. Lord, I want to trust you like I used to. Unbelief has a high price, higher than anybody wants to pay. You know what would you, uh, what would you, mamas and daddies do if you're young to come up to you and say, Mom, you know what? What would you do if they come up to you and say this? I'm not going to obey you because I don't believe the words you say. That hurts you, wouldn't it? In essence, that's what we're telling God. I'm not going to obey what you say because I don't believe you. We tell you what, there ain't that one reliable source has to Jesus Christ. That's right. And he, he believes in you. What's friend? What's keeping you away? You say you love, trust God, and you get it and complain about that, everything. It's sun. If the sun don't shine bright enough, you're mad. If it don't shine, you're mad because it don't shine. Amen. <laughs> if it's snowing, if it's icing outside, if it's cold, then a well digger shovel. I still go. I thank God. Yes, sir. Amen. If I got a little chain in my pocket, I thank God. If I had to, I thank God. I know you're going to see me. Right. Amen. Let me tell you what, friend. Many men are not into it because of unbelief. Yeah. He wants us to trust him. I hope so. Just trust him. There's no other way. Amen. Yeah, yeah, just trust him. I'll tell you what, friend. Our belief is manifested in our life the way we obey it. Yeah. Unbelief is that your problem this morning. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you a question. And I believe I'm not know the answer to it, but I'm going to ask you a question. There's no doubt in your mind if you lay here, if you say here this morning. What if you knew? Now it's by my watch, it's a bleak creek time. 12-10. What if you knew at 12-12 that the rapture is going to take place? Mm. Mm. We don't know the time on the hour, but just hypothetically, I'm saying. I guarantee you this hour will be packed. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sir, this. It will be packed. God, we won't make sure we have things where we need to be That's before right. the Lord. What's the difference anyway? That's right. That's right. That's What's right. the difference? Amen. Yeah. What's the difference, folks? It's good for you. I really don't want the God, the Lord, to come back and I'm dwelling around with an heart of unbelief to you. Let's stand all over the house of God. We've had a great service to God for sweet spirit here. And I believe this is a word for 